we introduce. Good afternoon, everyone. Delighted to have you with us today. I'm happy to introduce Dr. Takuma Nakamura. He received his doctoral degree from the Tokyo Institute in 2007. Working at JAXA for four years, he moved to the Los Alamos National Laboratory, where he had a postdoc for three years. He then left for Austria six years ago. He's now working at the Austrian Academy of Scientists, Sciences as a staff scientist and leading simulation research in the Institute. He uses high performance fluid and kinetic simulations to study the magnetopause boundary layers and magnetotail physics. He compares his predictions with observations from spacecraft such as Themis and MMS. Today, he's going to be speaking to us about the low latitude boundary layer. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you to place yourselves on mute. And if you have any questions, just type them in the chat box. We'll read them at the end of the seminar. Please go ahead, Dr. Nakamura. Okay, so uh, do you hear me? Yes, yes, but we're muted now. Okay, so first of all, I thank the organizers for inviting me to this great seminar series. And uh, today's topic is the uh, low latitude boundary layer, LLBA. LLBA is defined as a region where the magnet seas and the magnet spheric plasmas are mixed along the magnet spheric side of the uh, low latitude magnet poles. And Understanding of this layer is important for the magnetospheric science because this layer is formed as a result of the solar wind magnetosphere coupling and the resulting solar wind mass and energy transfer into the magnetosphere. Okay, so first, please excuse me, but showing this slide is my routine. My speech way is awkward because of my disability, but I just say today, enjoy my talk because the content of this presentation is not awkward. And more, more importantly, I believe the science should be open for everyone regardless of any disability, gender, religion, and race. Okay, so let's move on to the science. In this presentation, I will first show the observational features of the LLBA and then the candidate mechanisms for the formation of the LLBA. The first are observational features. I will first show a basic structure of the LLBA and then uh, show the uh, IMF and the uh, local dependencies. And after that, I will briefly show the uh, coupling between the LLBL and the ionosphere. Okay. And these figures are adopted from the PhD basis by Tim Eastman in 1979, entitled the uh, plasma boundary layer and the magnet pose layer of the Earth's magnet sphere. In the uh, 70s, uh, in situ spacecraft observation started exploring uh, various important boundary layers located around the Earth's magnet sphere. And the light figure is one of the initial, uh, initial observations of the low latitude boundary layer. In this event, the uh, imp 6 spacecraft crossed the magnet poles here and the subsequent uh, low latitude boundary layer. And, uh, after these initial studies, 
The development of observation enables us to know the detailed structure of the LLBA. And this is an um, example of the uh, typical LLBA crossing uh, observed by tennis. In this event, the tennis spacecraft crossed the magnet pod from the magnet sphere to the magnet seas. And, and during the crossing, we see the multi-layered structure. The spacecraft first crossed the uh, almost stagnant inner LLBL with cross field lines. And then the spacecraft observed the uh, tailward flowing uh, outer LLBL with newly crossed field lines. And after crossing the magnet poles, this spacecraft observed the magnet cis boundary layer named MSPL with the open field lines, one end of which connects to the Earth's magnet field. And finally, this spacecraft observed the uh, plasma depression layer, PDL, over the inner magnet cis where the magnet sees magnet field is compressed. And uh, observation further shows clear IMF dependencies of these LLBL properties. First, past statistical studies uh, show LLBL tends to be thicker during the a northward IMF than during the southward IMF. And more recently, the multi spacecraft space observations by Thames, in which the uh, five Thames spacecraft crossed the uh, uh, crossed the magnet for perpendicularly to the uh, perpendicular to the magnet force in turn under steady northward IM conditions showed very uh, steady uh, expansion of the uh, low latitude boundary layer in the direction perpendicular to the magnet force. And on the other hand, first interval observation shows that when IMF is southward, LLBL tends to be highly structured and uh, often shows a transient such as the uh, flux transfer event as shown in here and here. This could be due to the uh, low latitude deconnection, as I will show later. But when IMF is northward, LLBL tends to be much more weakly structured, uh, weakly structured. So uh, these observations indicate that the LLBL tends to be thick and steady for the northward IMF. And past spacecraft observations have also shown local time dependencies of the LLBL properties. First, the LLBL tends to be thicker and is increasing distance from the subsolar point. And probably related to this, uh, Past geotech observation statistically shows that the denser LLBL often appear in the uh, flank to tail regions, especially on the uh, downside. So, 
So these results indicate that more efficient solar wind entry occurs in the more tailored region, especially on the downside. Another important local time dependence is the temperature anisotropy. First, on electrons in the whole LLBL, the parallel electron temperature is known to be higher than the perpendicular temperature. But, but on the other hand, on ions, the perpendicular temperature anisotropy is seen in the day side and the uh, parallel anastropy is seen only in a more uh, tailored region. This difference results from the increase of the parallel ion temperature with increasing downtail distance. Next, the, as another important irreversible properties for ions, there is a very clear donut asymmetry in the ion energy spectrum in the LLBL. This is the geotail observations at the uh, dome and dusk side LLBL. And first on the uh, dusk side, we see the a very Clear two distinct components of high energy magnetospheric and low energy magnet cis ions. But on the downside, we see almost one component ions due to the heating of the low energy component. So uh, these IMF and the local time dependencies indicate that the, uh, the different LLBL formation mechanisms are active at different locations and different conditions. And another important LLBL physics is the coupling with ionosphere. First theories in the 70s and 80s uh, suggested that the, uh, the velocity share uh, across the low latitude band radius can drive the uh, field aligned currents and, and the resulting uh, energy transfer between the LLBL and the Ionosphere. And more recently, a theoretical model of the field aligned currents has been developed by considering the uh, thickness of the aurora to the boundary layer. And this model is very well consistent with the observed currents. This physics would be focused in more detail in some future talks related to the field, field aligned currents in this seminar series. Okay, so next, I will show the candidate uh, formation mechanisms of the LLBL. With support from theories and simulations, understanding of the formation mechanisms has been drastically advanced for the last few decades. And now it is suggested that these three processes, a magnetic reconnection, Kelvin helium force instability, and kind of waves, primarily contribute to the formation. So, yeah. So first, the vent uh, IMF is southward. Uh, magnetic reconnection is uh, expected to occur at low latitude. 
here. And if it leads to the uh, very transient formation of reconnected fit lines and the LLBA. But on the other hand, uh, if the boundary layer pre exists before the onset of the connection, this pre existing, pre existing boundary layer can be peeled away by the low latitude reconnection. And the past uh, interval observation indeed showed the lack of the outer low latitude boundary layer only during the uh, southward IMF period. So uh, these results may explain the reason why the low latitude boundary layer is thinner and highly structured for the southward IMF. On the other hand, when the IMF is northward, magnetic reconnection is expected to occur behind the cusps. And if this high latitude reconnection occurs at the uh, both hemisphere, as a group uh, as reproduced by a global MHD simulations, the LLBA with closed field lines filled by the magnetic sheet plasmas are uh, produced in the uh, Day side region. And the uh, occurrence of this double high latitude reconnection was indeed confirmed by in situ measurement by observing the uh, bidirectionally heated electrons coming from the uh, to the connection region at both cusps. And more recently, a more practical model of the high latitude reconnection related LLBA formation was proposed. High latitude reconnection would occur more or less sequentially, and so. The connection at one side of the hemisphere, uh, one side of the hemisphere first produces an open field line. And uh, uh, considering 3D space, this open field line convex along the magnetic force towards the terminator. And if the connection occurs at another side of the hemisphere during this convection, then The closed field line is formed. And uh, uh, in observation indeed statistically shows the closed fine the closed field lines with bidirectional electrons tend to be observed not around the subsolar point uh, but around the region closer to the terminator. So in summary, high latitude reconnection would form the open or closed boundary layer in the they decided to flank regions. Okay, next, the case instability is known to driven by the velocity share between the magnet seas and the magnet sphere. In situ observations show that the uh, catch waves tend to be observed much more frequently during the uh, northward IMF periods. And the multi point cluster observation directly observes the uh, non linearly uh, rolled up cage vortex structures at the front during the steady northward IMF condition. And these cage waves and the vortices 
been considered as another important primary candidate for the LLBL formation, especially during northward IMF periods. And theory and simulations predicted that the uh, nonlinear cage vortex can induce the uh, secondary uh, diffusive processes like the secondary cage and related uh, instabilities and the secondary reconnection within the low drop vortex. And recent uh, 3D free kinetic simulations modeling realistic magnet port like conditions suggested that the uh, secondary reconnection can cause a rapid expansion of the mixing layer near Frank. And the secondary cage and the detail instabilities can cause a additional a gradual transport of the mixed plasmas deeper into the magnet sphere. So these results indicate that the uh, case instability can form the thick flank to tail low latitude boundary layer. And the next, the uh, past kinetic theories predicted that the uh, kinetic iPhone waves can be induced at magnetic poles by coupled with compressional waves in the magnetic seas and cause diffusive transport strongly enough to form the low latitude boundary layer. And the ULF waves, which can be interpreted as kinetic iPhone waves, were indeed very frequently observed around the uh, they said magnet poles. And observations further demonstrated the uh, perpendicular uh, ion heating caused by these kinetic iron waves. So these results may explain the uh, perpendicular temperature anastropy for ions observed in the day side low latitude boundary layer. Okay, so until here, I talked on how each local process such as reconnection, catch waves, and the kinetic carbon waves contribute to the LLBL formation. But recent studies suggested that the, uh, these local processes can also drive other processes, and such a cross process coupling can further enhance mixing and transport rate that is the LLBL formation rate. The cage vortex induced secondary reconnection and the secondary cage and radiator instability are the example of uh, these local process couplings. And in addition, uh, recent observation shows that the cage waves can also induce other waves such as the uh, kinetic iron waves, lower hybrid waves, and the ion acoustic waves within the arcade uh, waves, and all of which are considered to enhance the local transport within the parent cage waves. And not only uh, these uh, local couplings, recently, a global coupling between the high latitude reconnection and the low latitude case instability was proposed. This is the unstable condition for the case instability. The first term is of the velocity share to induce the instability, and the second term is the suppression term by the magnetic field tension. And the uh, ratio of these two terms is the alpha Mach number for the velocity share, 
and as this Mach number increases, the case instability can grow stronger. So the point is that the high latitude reconnection forms the uh, low latitude banded layer and enhances density along the magnet poles. And this enhanced density can lead to the subsequent excitement of stronger cage waves along the uh, they side to ground magnet poles. And indeed, the uh, MMS mission successfully observed uh, such strong cage wave activities between the uh, pre existing uh, low latitude boundary layer, which can be interpreted as being formed by the high latitude reconnection and the magnet seas. And a 3D frequent determination of this MMS event uh, further showed the very efficient mixing and transport across the magnet poles caused by the secondary reconnection and the secondary cage and the daily terror instabilities. And uh, interestingly, the simulation data is quantitatively constant with the uh, MMS observation data. So which indicates that the uh, global coupling between the high depth to the reconnection and the cage instability and the resulting efficient mixing and LLVL expansion may really occur during this MMS event. And this simulation of this MMS event further shows that the parallel electron heating starts uh, just after the secondary reconnection started in the early nonlinear growth phase of the case instability. It would be seen in the day side of it. This may partially explain the observed parallel electron temperature anisotropy in the uh, whole LLBA. And the simulation uh, also shows that the uh, parallel ion heating also occur in the later nonlinear growth phase. Uh, it would be seen in the rank to tail region. And this may explain the parallel ion temperature anisotropy seen in the rank to uh, tail and all that is boundary data. Okay, so in summary, the observation have revealed the uh, multi-layered structures uh, of the unrelated boundary layer and its IMF and local time dependencies. When the, uh, the elevator is thicker for the northward IMF than the southward IMF and with increasing downtail distance. And when the IMF is southward, LVL is highly structured, but when, when IMF is northward, LVL is much more weakly structured. And the parallel electron temperature is generally higher than the perpendicular temperature in the whole LVL, but the parallel ion temperature is lower than the perpendicular temperature in the bayside region and it gets higher with increasing downtail distance. And as formation mechanisms of the low latitude boundary layer, magnetic reconnection and case, case instability, kinetic atom waves, and their 
local and global couplings have been uh, proposed. And these processes uh, can successfully explain many of these observed LLB features. And finally, I will briefly introduce more recent works related to the LLB formation. First, in this work uh, done by Soraki et al., the authors combine the uh, high resolution global MSC simulations under northward IM conditions and test particles for IM. And as a result, the uh, test particle trajectory showed more solar wind particles enter the uh, night side of the magnetosphere from the dawn side. And these entered particles are being more strongly heated on the dawn side. These features agree very well with observed dawn gas symmetry, such as seen in ion energy spectrum in LLB. And next, the free kinetic simulations of the magnetopause case instability newly showed that the uh, when considering the uh, background magnetic turbulence, the initial turbulence can drive the case instability and the substrate and secondary reconnection more strongly, uh, which leads to the more efficient solar wind entry and the formation of the thick mixing layer. So uh, these recent works indicate the importance of global cross-process and even cross-region couplings uh, for future works to more practically understand the uh, productive boundary layer and related magnetospheric physics. So the two D, uh, to treat these uh, global physics self-consistently, global kinetic simulations, uh, which is now uh, becoming feasible, would be very useful. And also, the future missions uh, is more observation points in the magnetosphere would also be uh, important. And finally, the uh, NASA's messenger mission recently found that the uh, productive boundary layer also exists along the uh, Mercury's magnet poles. So the comparisons with other planets, uh, for example, using uh, recently launched the Colombo mission uh, for Mercury, would also be important to more generally understand the uh, boundary layer physics in space presence. Okay, and today I just introduced past and recent LLBL studies only very, very briefly. So if you want to learn them in more detail, I listed the papers I showed today and please check them. So that's all I have today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. That was a wonderful and clear presentation. I have seen two questions and I'm going to type the first one into the, into the text box and read it. This question is from Ankush Bhaskar, and he would like to know why does the LLBL exhibit a uh, multi-layer structure and how does that multi-layer structure happen? Okay, so I'll go back to this. Right. 
And uh, uh, the multi layer structures of the LLVM is uh, basically depend on the, uh, the uh, how uh, the connection occurs at the uh, the uh, high latitude regions. And for example, the uh, the uh, in this case, the uh, the spacecraft first observed the uh, uh, inner LLBL in which the uh, the uh, uh, by the Bidirectional uh, heated electrons are uh, very clearly seen. So uh, this indicates that the uh, the connection uh, at two point occurs uh, uh, much before uh, the. from the observation time. But in the outer LBA, the, uh, the uh, northward and the southward uh, are going, are moving electrons are not well balanced. So which means the, uh, this layer is on the newly reconnected field lines. So, uh, so such uh, status for the uh, connected field lines come from the multi-layer structure. So the, the basic answer is two different time intervals of reconnection, is that the answer? Yes. Okay, thank you. We're getting some more questions in now. The next question is from Richard Denton. Richard Denton asks, how different are the LLBL and the magneto sheath boundary layer? How can you distinguish them? Okay, so the... Uh, so basically the, uh, the difference between the uh, the big difference between the higher uh, outer LBL and the magnet sheath boundary layer is the uh, the the closed or open uh, field lines. So the uh, in the outer LBL, the uh, layer is on the the new D, but closed field lines. But in the magnetic boundary layer, the, uh, the field line is still open. So this is the a big difference between. Will we, will we expect the, the uh, magneto sheath boundary layer to be on magnetic field lines with a magneto sheath orientation? Yes, and the, uh, in the magnetic sheath boundary layer, we also see the only unidirectional electrodes. Okay, so they, would, they may have different orientations, the magneto sheath boundary layer and the LLBL, LLBL northward, Magneto sheath will be whatever the magneto sheath magnetic field has. Yeah, that's right. Okay, uh, here's the next question. The next question is from Mike Chandler. Ions in the dayside dense low latitude boundary layer typically show peak pitch angle, peak fluxes at 90 degrees pitch angle. Is there an explanation for that? So,
RPA side, LLBL ions, 90 degree pitch angles. Okay, Saturday we are at 19 degrees pitch. So, uh, yeah, so uh, basically, if the uh, LLB is formed uh, uh, by the anticonvection process, the uh, we uh, may uh, we would also see the uh, the electron heated in the a parallel direction. So, but the uh, if the other processes like the kinetic waves or uh, the KT waves can form the uh, boundary layer, the things would be changed. So does it make sense for you? Uh, maybe. <laughs> okay. Let's let's go on to the next question. Uh, the next. Ooh, what happened to it? I thought I typed the next question in. Where did it go? Well, the next question concerns slide twenty-two. Slide 22, in the lower left. Okay. Biswajit Ojha asked whether the increase in the, is there any observational evidence for the increase in parallel temperature shown in the lower left? Yes, the, uh as I showed before, the uh, in the uh, LBL, the past geotail observation shows that the, uh, the perpendicular anisotropy is seen in the day side, and the parallel uh, anisotropy seen in the uh, more. Right. And this uh, is sustained by the uh, nearly constant perpendicular temperatures and the uh, increase of the parallel temperature with increasing downtail distance. So uh, this point is constant with the simulation. Okay, good, thank you. Here is a question from Lisa Antonova. Lisa asks, what is the role of turbulent fluctuations in plasma transport in the LLBL? So, uh, so uh, in this simulation, the uh, the uh, when considering the uh, background turbulence uh, in the magnetic seas regions, then the uh, uh, initial fluctuations can cause the uh, uh, can excite the kit instability stronger, and also the uh, in the strongly growth. Uh, Kh waves, the secondary processes like the secondary deconnection uh, is also uh, a close uh, a more uh, strongly. So uh, and yeah, so uh, the only uh, turbulence can. Uh, enhance the uh, magnetic pole physics mm -hmm. uh, and the, this may be able to uh, enhance the plasma transport. Uh, well, this, the turbulence serves as a seed for the Kelvin-Helmholtz instability and reconnection, which yeah. in turn 
aid in getting plasma across the boundary into the LLBL. Yeah, that's okay. right. Okay, this is good. Here's the next question. How can you distinguish plasma sheet and LBL? -L How can you distinguish plasma sheet from LLBL when looking on the flanks of the magnetosphere at Kelvin Helmholtz vortices? What is the difference between plasma sheet and LLBL when you're looking at vortices, their properties? So the basically the uh, relative boundary area is defined as a region where the magnet sees a plasma uh, uh, included. So the uh, so uh, basically this can distinguish the uh, relative boundary layer and the plasma sheet, but the, uh, sometimes it, even in the plasma sheet, uh, the observation uh, shows the uh, cold dense component in the plasma sheet. Mm -hmm. So uh, in such case, uh, it is somewhat more difficult to distinguish mm -hmm. the two regions. Okay, and here's the last question that I see. This one is from Charles Chapel, and Charles is interested to know if there's any evidence in observations or also probably in simulations for how deep uh, solar wind plasma can get into the magnetosphere on the flanks. Can it go through the flanks and reach the center of the tail? Uh, this is actually a very good question uh, because the uh, this is I think the uh, very important future topic uh, we should know. And uh, but there are some hint. Uh, for example, in this study by Solatia et al, the uh, uh, high energy uh, solar wind plasmas can enter into the night side of the magnet sphere uh, deeper into the uh, uh, magnet sphere. And this is because of the uh, magnetic field curvature drift or the magnetic field A gradient drift. Mm -hmm. So the uh, if there are some high energy component, uh, these ions can be drift to the dusk side, uh, dusk world, uh, more uh, more so quickly. Mm -hmm. So uh, so so I think the uh, how deeply the plasmas uh, can enter depend on the uh, how uh, how strongly plasmas are heated on the local process, uh, such as the high latitude deconnection or the cage waves or the kinetic carbon waves. Okay, very good. I don't see any more questions. I would like to thank the speaker again for a very nice comprehensive survey of the low latitude boundary layer. I'd like to thank everyone for joining and I'd like to remind you that there will be another seminar next week, same time, Ramon Lopez. He'll be talking about current systems in the magnetosphere. Thank you everybody and see you in a week. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, bye.